it's going to be a great Christmas for retail, but maybe a bad Christmas <laughs> for retail. Can you solve your own riddle, please, for $400, Stacey? Yes. Um, so I think that if you look at the consumer right now, you know, they're feeling great. Confidence is up there. You know, jobless rates lowest since the late 1960s. So everything's good. Uh, money's burning a hole in the consumer's pocket. However, you know, certainly Amazon had to go last week and ruin the retail party and say that, hey, we're going to lead and raise wages. So that's wonderful for the consumer. But for retailers, once again, they're going through this wave that we saw a few years ago where their costs are going to be going up again. So that's going to put pressure certainly on the bottom line and especially for the companies that are struggling like a JCPenney and like a Bed Bath & Beyond. So effectively, if I'm hearing you right, and correct me, of course, if I'm hearing you incorrectly, that, that we could have a great Christmas in terms of consumer sales, right? They're up 4% or 5%, whatever it is, but maybe don't expect the stocks to respond because their costs are likely to go higher. Exactly, and I think that's the expectation out there right now is yes, um, sales will probably be up over 5% at this point for holiday, and that's great. But again, this needs to translate to the bottom line, particularly at a time when so many retailers are still very behind in terms of their e commerce spending and really need to get up to speed. So now you throw in increased wages, and you know, you look at that operating margin line and say, you know, wh where is it coming from? Where's that expansion coming from? You know, tell us why you think that, and I'm going to sound like a phony millennial here, the TIF is so GD, <laughs> OMG. It's so GD, it's GD, geographically desirable. Thank so, you for you know, clearing that you up, because I know at the morning when you we know, say we, GD, some people are like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, when you were in your 20s, you had to date somebody who was geographically desirable. It's like, Tiffany, if you look at the luxury sector right now, it's, it's been incredibly healthy, and Tiffany has certainly lagged behind. However, not only are they getting their product more modern, younger, doing some interesting things on the store testing level, but the place that tourism is weakest in luxury is in Europe, and they have the least exposure to Europe of any of the brands there. So I think they're teed up for a really nice holiday and on top of it everybody knows that they're spending on their flagship store that big news is out of the way here so I think in terms of Tiffany comps rule and and holiday I think that will happen a lot of our viewers like to bottom feed they want to find stocks that are beaten up and think okay I'm gonna get something here for like a deep deep discount that'll go up absolutely bed bath and beyond the stock looks cheap you say it's not and avoid it I agreed. It's so the operating margins on this one have gone from 13 percent down to 4 percent in five years. They have lagged behind just what I was talking about in terms of spending on e-commerce. And they've been basically driving the business through coupons and promotions. And they have a lot more spending to do. They've had a management team that really needs to evolve, I would say. So I think Bed Bath & Beyond is going to be hard pressed to find, you know, increasingly great labor as they're competing against everybody else who's increasing wages and driving their business. So I, I would avoid Bed Bath & Beyond, although it might look cheap on the current numbers. I think those numbers will come down. That stock price looks like it needs a cleanup on aisle six.